Hi everyone, thank you for joining us again. I'm James, Market Strategist at U Smart Securities. Welcome to Talk Stocks with James series. Should investors stop hitting pause on Netflix? And this Talk Stock with James series is conducted every alternate Thursday, 7.30 p.m. The next one would be 25th of May. And we have been hosting this bi-weekly webinar since September last year which has allowed us to cover a wide range of stocks. If you would like us to discuss a particular stock that you like during our next webinar, please recommend to us using the Q&A box. Please also note that I only cover stocks listed on the US, Hong Kong, or Singapore stock exchanges. Let me begin with some disclaimer first. This presentation is presented to you for education and sharing purpose only and does not constitute to any form of advice. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. So today we will discuss one of the favorite stocks among retail investors, Netflix. So what is Netflix? Netflix started as a DVD renter by mail service in 1997 where customers can order DVDs online and have the DVD uh, delivered to their homes by snail mail. Uh, it was meant to compete with the largest video rental stores such as Blockbusters by offering a more convenient and cost-effective way for customers to rent these. But after 25 years, Netflix is ending its legacy DVD by mail business in September this year. In 2007, Netflix changed the business model by introducing the streaming service, which allowed subscribers to instantly stream movies and TV shows online without the need for DVDs or any physical media itself. That subscribers like yourself can now watch TV and movies using phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Netflix has been able to grow to his current size because traditional media companies like Disney or Warner Bros. were slow to recognize the full potential of streaming services due to their reluctance to let go of their cable TV businesses. When Netflix first launched the streaming service in 2007, its market cap was $1.8 billion. Its market cap peaked at $306 billion in 2021 providing a return of 186 times to investors who invested in Netflix in 2007. Currently, Netflix share price is 50% lower than its all-time high, which uh, having a market cap of $147 billion. Despite this, if you have invested in Netflix since 2007, you are still able to see an uh, 88 times return on your Netflix investment itself. Based on Bloomberg consensus, 30 analysts recommend buy, 22 recommend hold, and 4 recommend sell. Last night, closing price was 335.42. The 12 months target price is 373.3, which is an upside potential of 11%. And Netflix stock price has been highly volatile during the past two years with a notable crash of 77% at one point in 2022 from its all-time high. Currently, the share price is still around 50% lower than the all-time high. Uh, furthermore, there is some significant jobs of 22%, 35% in February and April last year when Netflix announced the quarterly earnings itself. So the question here is why Netflix crash and burn? The reason for such a decline in Netflix stock price can be attributed to a few factors. Uh, firstly, the company faced intense competition from other streaming services such as Disney+, Plus, Apple TV+, Plus, Hulu, HBO Max, and Amazon Prime Video. Every company just wants a piece of the streaming revenue, uh, causing the investor to question Netflix's ability to maintain the dominance in the streaming industries. 
Secondly, Netflix is a stay-at-home stock, after all, that largely benefited from the COVID-19 pandemic. However, with the world returning to normal, the demand is decreasing, making it less attractive to investors. And investors back then suddenly, suddenly realized that Netflix is a one-trip pony, that it only got one revenue stream, which is the streaming service, leading investors to start questioning what's next for Netflix post-pandemic. To address this concern, Netflix introduced new initiatives such as launching games and introducing a low-price ad-supported plan in an attempt to create a second uh, revenue stream itself. Lastly, I believe the main reason for lower share price for Netflix is lower than expected total addressable market. Uh, Netflix say in 2018 that the total addressable market of subscribers, not including China, could be about 800 million. However, during the first two quarters of 2022, uh, there were some decline in the numbers of subscribers, leading investors to suspect that 220 million subscribers number may already be approaching the peak of the total addressable market itself instead of the previously uh, estimated uh, 800 million. This is why Netflix has a lower valuation now as investors are hesitant to give Netflix an expensive valuations. In 2021, the PE ratio for Netflix was as high as 63 times and it has since decreased to 38 times now. The PS ratio was uh, 10.7 times in 2021 and has now fallen to 4.6 times. In other words, based on the current valuations, uh, Netflix appears to be relatively fairly priced. So it's now a good entry price for Netflix. Let me briefly show you technical analysis side of things. I reckon we, have, we may have seen the bottom uh, in May uh, 2022 and now it's forming an uptrend channel and lately the share price touches uh, the lower bound of the upward channel and is ready or look ready to move higher itself. Next, we also like to use Fibonacci retracement to check how high it could go. So uh, we are seeing prices react well when it bounced off of the Fibonacci level at 23.6%, at 38.2%, indicating the Fibonacci retracement is working well here. The current price is 335.42, that it may face resistance level at 38.2%, which is uh, $368, which means the share price may go higher. Uh, by another 11% before hitting the strong resistance here itself. You may also want to draw a, tra uh, a trend line connecting the uh, 2015 and 2018 peaks uh, where the prices often bounce off the trend line that we could see over here uh, and it always resume a bull run itself. Unfortunately, the trend line was broken back in 2022, causing a sharp drop uh, to $160. And now the trend line has become the resistance level itself. Uh, recently, the share price attempted to stay above the trend line, but failed. In order to establish a long-term bullish trend itself, the share price needs to rise above the resistance level of maybe $370 and break above the previous high here at $379, which may trigger a short squeeze and clear the way for a sustained upward momentum itself. And next, let me try to answer the question here. Can Netflix continue to win the streaming wars? The short answer is yes.
to be honest, ever since Disney Plus was launched, I prefer Disney Plus over Netflix. I think Disney Plus has stronger intellectual property IP that could uh that net uh that Disney Plus can explore, such as Star Wars and Marvel content. However, in the past two years, Disney Plus has had more misses than hits, which makes me prefer Netflix uh, streaming service more. And one disadvantage of Netflix is that most of the original content will eventually come to an end, like House of Cards, Narcos, and Money Heist. Netflix cannot keep pumping out season after season of the same show. Uh, even their most popular series, Stranger Things, will end after season 5. So one best way to squeeze out more money from their original series is to do spin-off. This is why Stranger Things will have a spin-off series soon. However, it's also worth noting that spin-off tend to have lower viewership than the original uh, series. For example, Game of Thrones Season 8 had an average of 11.99 million viewers per episode in the 18 to 49 demographic, where the spin-off House of Cards has only had 1.87 million viewers per episode. Since Netflix does not have as much original content, uh, original intellectual property IP as Disney to explore, their strategy is to consistently produce successful original content. Uh, Netflix needs to keep spending more and more on content in order to stay ahead. In 2022, Netflix uh, spent $16 billion on content alone and it is estimated that they will spend $17 billion on content this year, making them one of the top spenders among all. So the theory here is, whichever company spend more on content, it should have produced more hits, and eventually it will attract more subscribers. However, it's not so true. For example, Disney has spent a lot of money on Star Wars spin-offs and Marvel TV shows, but the results have been mixed at best. And Amazon's The Ring of Power is currently the most expensive show ever made with a 60 million per episode budget, which is 35 million more than the second most expensive TV show. But The Ring of Power is bad and hence is not so successful uh, to attract the new subscribers. In contrast, Netflix seems to have found the right balance in terms of investing in content and has managed to produce hit series such as uh, The Queen Gambit, Stranger Things, Squid Game, Ozark, and The Glory, just to name a few. This is why it's unsurprising for all of us to see Netflix host the largest market share both globally and in the US. Netflix has the largest demand share of all content on its platform in quarter 4, 2022 globally at 39.6%. Uh, second place is Prime Video with 11%. In the US, Netflix maintained its lead with a demand share of 16.6%, followed by Hulu 14.5%. If you are measuring market share in terms of interest, it's worth noting that Netflix holds the second place uh, with 20% market share. If you measure market share by share of viewing, Netflix consistently holds either the first or second place in the US, uh, United Kingdom, and Mexico, typically competing with YouTube for the top spots. And if you are Looking at the subscriber number globally, Netflix holds number one spot with 232 million subscribers. Second place should be Prime Video 
by Amazon with more than 200 million subscribers. But Amazon Prime Videos is given free to the Prime uh, members itself. And Disney Plus holds the third place with 158 million subscribers. Uh, moreover, what set Netflix apart is the high APU, uh, average revenue per user. So it's one of the highest APU in the industry with uh, $11.7. In contrast, Disney Plus APU is only $4.44. The combination of a high APU and a large number of subscribers makes Netflix an attractive investment option for many, many investors. And now we should look at the Netflix financial data. Is Netflix back to growing after two quarters of bleeding subscribers? The short answer is yes. And hence, the share price that we are seeing now has jumped up about 90% since the 2022 low itself. And to understand Netflix business, you need to focus on their streaming revenue uh, because it's contributing to 99% of the total revenue. Although it grew by uh, 24% in 2020, it has now slowed down to only 6.6% in 2022. The revenue growth has slowed down in most regions as well. The US-Canada market grew by 8% in 2022, while Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa slowed down to 0% in 2022 from 40% growth in 2020. Latin America is doing okay in maintaining its growth at 11 13%. APEC grew by 9% in 2022. Uh, US, Canada, and Europe are the most important market at, as it contributes to about 75% of the total revenue. If we were to focus on the quarterly revenue growth, Netflix is no longer the growth engine that we've seen in uh, 2020. The year-on-year -year growth uh, was double-digit uh, back then. In the recent quarters, the year-on-year year, year -year growth were just single-digit. And most importantly, Europe, um, Middle East, and Africa region has negative year-on-year -year, uh, growth now. And let's look at the profit margin. The operating margin has declined from 27% in 2021 first quarter to 21% uh, in the latest quarter, uh, quarter one, 2023. Uh, furthermore, the annual uh, operating margin has also declined from 20% in 2021 to 17.8% in 2022. The company guidance for the next quarter is 19% and 18 to 20% for the full year 2023. So it's not particularly exciting to look at the profit margin number. Or I should say it's a bit disappointing. Let's look at the breakdown of the subscribers, the UCAN and EMEA region are still the two largest region accounting for a combined 65% subscriber number. Fortunately, the APU is still going in UCAN. It is $16 in the latest quarter. EMEA, on the other hand, slowed down to $10.89 in the latest quarter, but still higher than uh, other regions that we are seeing here. The APU, uh, average revenue per user is still strong, uh, having increased from uh, $11.67 in 2021 to $11.76 in 2022. However, the number of subscribers has slowed down uh, uh, with only 
million new edition in 2022 itself compared to 36 million subscriber editions in 2020. So how is Netflix, you may ask, is going to increase the subscribers number? The answer is advertising, advertisement supported tier. Uh, Netflix is offering a low price plan at $6.99 per month instead of the premium plan package at $19.99 per month in hopes to attract more subscribers. But the low price plan is going to force you to watch more advertisement, which I'm going to explain more later. And Netflix is also cracking down on the password sharing, meaning to say it will no longer allow users to share their accounts with individuals living in different households. For example, if you are staying in Canada, that you are subscribing to a $16.49 a month package in Canada, that will be an extra fee of $7.99 a month to add an extra member who can stream Netflix from a different household, household itself. The pay sharing program has currently been rolled out in Canada, New Zealand, and several European countries. Bear in mind that extra members uh, do not consider as a new pay subscriber, but the extra fees over here will improve the APU. Next, let's talk about the advertising business that Netflix is exploring. Will Netflix advertising strategy work? And eventually, will it become a large revenue stream for Netflix? When you think of Netflix, you need to associate it with other entertainment services such as cable TV, YouTube, TikTok, gaming, and social media. Because Netflix is not just competing with other streaming services, it's also um, competing with other entertainment services for user times, for user engagement. In the traditional SaaS model, uh, subscription-based business model that Netflix is in at the moment, an increase in user engagement does not translate to increased revenue. For example, I watch 10 hours of Netflix a month versus I watch 100 hours of Netflix a month does not bring Netflix extra revenue as I only pay the same $22 sing dollar per month. So this is a major disadvantage of a subscription model. But how come if user spent more time on YouTube on TikTok, on Instagram, or on Facebook, is going to bring extra revenue to these companies. It is because in an advertising-based model, the longer a user engage with the platform, the more advertising revenue it generates. More advertisers would want to advertise on a platform that can attract users to spend more time on the platform. This is the advantage of an advertising-based model over a simple Netflix subscription model uh, itself. And this is the reason why Netflix wants to go into advertising business. In 2022, on average, US adults spent 61 minutes per day on Netflix, 52 minutes on TikTok, 46 minutes on YouTube. Suffice to say that since US adults spend more time on Netflix than other social platforms. Netflix is an ideal platform for advertisers to insert commercials and subscribers are more likely to watch a complete movie or TV show on Netflix than a short video on TikTok. For example, it's likely that you will sit through a commercial just to watch the complete episode of Stranger Things. Currently, you will have to sit through four to five minutes of commercials per hour on Netflix 
if you subscribe to the ad supported tier at $6.99. The streaming platforms such as Disney Plus, Hulu, and HBO Max are also offering the ad-supported tier to their users. So it's not just Netflix. If I had to choose one streaming service in the US, I would probably subscribe to Netflix only due to the lower cost uh, at $6.99, cheaper than other competitors. Netflix also has uh, better quality content and extensive library of TV shows and movies as well. Uh, this is why advertisers would likely prefer to advertise on Netflix because of the stronger brand name, which could allow Netflix to gain a certain share of the advertising market from the competitors. In the long run, the average monthly revenue per member should be higher because of higher advertising revenue. So ultimately, it could all boil down to the numbers. And with 232 million subscribers, Netflix currently leads all other streaming services. Assuming a 10% conversion rate from subscribers to ad-supported tier, Netflix could potentially have 23 million subscribers in the ad-supported plan, uh, beating other competitors. Uh, this larger audience reach may make Netflix a more attractive platform for advertisers. The advertising market is now a promising and exciting space still. US advertising market remains resilient. It's expected to grow at 3.4% this year. The streaming advertising uh, the streaming advertisement sector is expected to go at 21% uh, this year and 31% uh, from a 31% increase um, estimate uh, back then uh, itself. So it's lower, but it's still quite uh, promising at 21%. However, based on the e-marketeer research, Netflix is going to capture uh, 2.5% CTV advertising market share where Hulu and Disney Plus, both owned by Disney, will capture 16% market share in total. Uh, the Netflix, uh, the US Netflix advertising revenue is predicted to reach about uh, between 650 million to 1.4 billion in 2023 depending on which research house, uh, which research report you read. For instance, eMarketeer predicts a revenue of 883 million. Uh, Bloomberg predicts 650 million. And Omdia predicts 1.4 billion advertising revenue for Netflix. So this advertising revenue is expected to make up 4% of Netflix total revenue this year. And by 2027, it's projected to generate more than 7 billion advertising revenue. This figure suggests that Netflix venture into advertising space has the potential to become a significant revenue stream for the company in coming years. And lastly, I want to show you the performance and risk ratio of different companies in the streaming industry. Uh, this is the yearly return uh, for Netflix, Disney, Amazon, Roku, Paramount, Warner Bros, Discovery, S&P 500, Nasdaq. And these are the analyzed returns uh, itself. A few key takes away here. Uh, firstly, Netflix share price performance is highly volatile. Some years it provides triple digit return. And some years it provided double digit negative return. Like last year, it has not been kind to investors. It generated negative 51% return to investors. However, if you were to look at 10 year analyzed return, it is 26% higher than SP 500, 12%, 100% 
higher than Nasdaq, 17%. But again, um, my second point here is Netflix is really quite volatile. The standard deviation is at 48 and the maximum drawdown is negative 76% in the past 10 years. So it's, yeah, it's higher than most of the stocks here. All in all, I think it is not so difficult to understand the streaming landscape uh, because it's still a B2C business after all. The success of Netflix is not only because of early mover advantage, it's also because legacy media like Disney and HBO are simply not strong enough. For example, I think that Disney got succession plan issue, while HBO Max is mostly known for its matured content that may not be appealing to family-oriented subscriber. Uh, Amazon Prime Video only has one or two famous TV shows, and it may be better off focusing on sports broadcasting rather than competing directly with Netflix. Apple TV, on the other hand, is too expensive for its limited library. And this is why I believe that there is a good chance that Netflix can succeed in TV advertising business, but it's still too early to tell uh, since Disney is still the advertiser favorite at the moment. After all, I prefer Disney because if streaming industry were to slow down further, Disney theme parks business is still quite lucrative. And in terms of portfolio allocations, I reckon if you want entertainment business as a whole, you might want to allocate maybe 3% in Disney and 2% in Netflix. Or if you really like Netflix, I would say that not more than 5% allocation. Why such a small allocation, you may ask? Because I don't reckon that is an urgency to invest into streaming business. Uh, because I don't see huge subscriber growth going forward. But Netflix focus is probably in APU growth and expanding into the advertising market. Uh, Netflix may surprise me, may surprise all of us if Netflix is able to produce more hit series, uh, movies like Squid Game, which generates significant buzz and draw in new subscribers. And I shall end my presentation here. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Talk Stock with James. I will uh, upload my replay there. And let's now proceed to the uh, Q&A session. First question, S&P 500 did not really drop much lately. Do you think that there will be more selling towards the end of May? Um, the answer is yes, if you believe in sell in May and go away. I think this is a good question. Um, so far, S&P 500 is down probably 1% uh, in May, if I'm not mistaken. Personally, I would say I will see more selling in May based on seasonality. Uh, but the fundamental that you are seeing now, the fundamental news wasn't so bad. Uh, banking crisis is like almost over. And 85% of S&P 500 companies already reported their earnings result. And they are surprisingly better than market expectations. Uh, but... So there is really not much fundamental news that could drag the US stock market down. But still, I don't reckon that market really need a bad news to go down. It can just go down because of technical corrections or no apparent reason, maybe just due to seasonality. So he uh, plunged. All in all, I still 
reckon that the best entry price for S&P 500 is 3,600. Uh, in my worst case scenario, if S&P 500 uh, were to drop to that uh, level itself. Do you think that gold can still go up? Am I late into buying gold? I have not looked at gold prices lately. I just know that it's probably near to the all-time high now. Do I think that it can still go up? Uh, I would say it really depends on how you look at the US dollar movement. I believe gold price has moved up a lot due to the dollar weakness. Uh, but I personally think that that is limited upside to the gold price uh, now. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's a triple tops pat uh, it's trying to form a triple tops pattern in terms of technical analysis. I would not say that it's an urgency to invest into gold unless you believe that the market is crashing or US dollars will weaken some more. Uh, I believe or I will say that the purpose of investing in gold in your portfolio is having some defensive asset allocation rather than really hoping that the gold price will shoot up to the moon. Okay, so um, let me go to the next question. Okay, is McDonald's still a good investment as it has gone up so, uh, gone up a lot this year? I think that McDonald's only uh, went up 10% or 12%, uh, 13% this year. So it's not really a lot. I, I, I don't think that the investment thesis is uh, basically, you already went up a lot, so you should not be investing. Uh, you should really ask yourself if you want some uh, defensive consumer staple stock like McDonald's or Coca-Cola in your portfolio. If you want, uh, in any case, McDonald's is still one of the best defensive place, place that you can uh, include in your portfolio. I, I did a webinar on McDonald's before. You might be interested to look at that uh, for more investment thesis. Okay. Is Disney a better choice than Netflix? Um, personally, I would say uh, yes. This is why I would say that probably you would like to allocate more in Disney itself. The main reason for that is Disney has other business segments other than streaming alone. It has the theme parks and resorts, uh, theater business and consumer products. Uh, and it has the existing advertising business in cable TV, linear TV, and streaming platform uh, advertising business as well, which are all bigger than Netflix at the moment. So to me, investing in Netflix at the moment requires more trust than investing in Disney. Like, you just got to believe that Netflix will produce more and more hit show like the gory, uh, Squid Game, which they had did so far. And you just got to believe that people are just going to sign up to the ad-supported tier that is a big enough uh, uh, ad plan that is going to draw more advertisers to advertise on the platform itself. So to me, uh, investing in Netflix uh, is riskier. Uh, this is why I would say that I prefer uh, Disney still. Okay, is Tesla a good buy now? I would say that Tesla is a good company. Um, is the current share price expensive? I, I can't remember the current share price. It's probably doing at 170 something dollars. I would say for long-term investment, it's not expensive. Uh, probably the question is, will it go down to $100? I would say that it's quite difficult to go back down to $100 because back in uh, when share price plunged to $100, uh, 
Tesla is having a demand problem, but now no one is talking about the demand problem. Uh, and everyone is hoping that it will come up with a newer model, cheaper model itself. So depending on when Elon Musk announced the cheaper model, like Model 2 or Model Q, we do not know how, what they will call it. Uh, but I would say that it could be a game changer that uh, people will uh, believe in Tesla growth story again and invest into it. So I would say that if you are really interested in Tesla, I would say that uh, one of the better game plan here is to split your entry into three tranches. Uh, invest uh, now and then another two tranches, you can pick a lower price point or if the price continue to go up, at least you already uh, are into it already. Uh, and then you can also uh, invest in the higher uh, price point that I would still say that it is a good long-term investment that if you really believe into the long-term growth of the EV industry, uh, Tesla is still one of the, is, okay, is the best stock to invest in. Uh, best EV stock to invest in, yep. So, uh, okay, I have run out of time. I see some other questions. Uh, maybe only one I didn't answer. Uh, let me answer them in the comment sessions. Uh, when I post the video on the YouTube channel, Talk Talk with James. And thank you all for attending. I shall see you in two weeks' time. Thank you.